So on our latest trip, we noticed that we were getting a little bit of a drip landing right here. But on further investigation, we found out it's coming from the underside, the little gap where the foot flush is. It's leaking by in this valve assembly here. This is a Dometic 310 foot flush toilet. Inside here is this valve sitting like that. When you hit the foot flush, it depresses that and pushes the valve seal back here and lets water go to the upper part of the bowl for the flush. I suspect this is what goes out. This seal wears out here. And every time you flush, a little bit of water is getting by and it's leaking out down in there, landing there. You can get these kits pretty cheaply on Amazon. That's the part number. These things seem to go every year or two, regardless of proper winterizing or whatever you do. They just seem to go out, whether you use the cheap ones like this or the Dometic ones. Uh, the Dometic replacement ones go between $40 and $50. And these cheaper ones you can find on Amazon between $12 and $20, somewhere in that range. So we're going to go ahead and get this taken apart and see if we can't get this fixed, dry this situation up. We'll point out the screw that's in here originally is this flathead screw. Uh, they're not terrible to get out, but I'm not a big fan of flatheads. If it's like it was in the uh, half bath that I have, which is way more cramped than this one. Uh, it can be a bear to get out if you don't have a lot of room to work or if you can't get your eyes on it. Uh, it does seem to be another slot down here for a screw. I don't know why they don't put them in like this when they install them. Uh, all the replacement kits come with two screws and they are Phillips. So that's an upgrade. So once we get it replaced, we'll make sure that second screw goes in there and they'll both be Phillips. Seems we're going to replace these on down the road more than likely. It'll come in handy to have them be Phillips head. Now that we got that removed, we'll go ahead and undo this water supply line. Try to have something handy like a bowl or some towels to catch water. Uh, the supply line won't be as much of a big deal if you hit your low point drains. Low point drains. You'll probably hear them pull air as you undo this. There we go. Just a little tiny bit comes out of that one. The one that really likes to leak is this one. There's water in this line. You just can't ever seem to get it all out and the valve body itself likes to hold on to some water. These assemblies have these little plastic tabs. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. Uh, you just depress a flathead screwdriver down in there to push it down and rock one side out and then go work the other side. and It should come out pretty easy. There it is. Pull the supply line out of the way. And here's our valve. Complete with a little bit of water in it. For the original installation, they use these ear clamps on these plumbing fittings. Um, the new kits come with screw bands to replace these. Feel free to use them. I kind of like the ear clamps myself. 
if you have the crimp pliers. They are easy to remove and install. Uh, just I kind of like them. They have other uses. You find them a lot in automotive items, fuel lines and things. So it's handy to have them. But if you had the pliers for the crimps, you just put them on the side. Take this old band off. When you undo this, a little bit of water is going to come out. That's where you're going to want to have your towel or a bowl. There you go. A little bit of water. And the valve likes to hold on to some as well. And before we install the new valve, we'll take the new ear clamp. We'll install that on the hose first. Take the new valve, snug this barbed fitting into the hose. Now we have this ear clamp where we want to clamp it onto the hose. I'm going to rotate this a little and make it easier on myself while I film it. There we go. New ear clamp. Once we have that clamped in place, we're going to take this valve start it back in and those two clips pop right back into place so before we put the water inlet hose back on I'm gonna put just a little bit of Teflon tape on here to help prevent any leaks don't want to put too much plastic fittings they get too tight uh, they could break fairly easily so just use a little bit and we'll take the water get this threaded back on and we'll tighten it up again these being plastic you don't want to tighten too much Kind of a fine line between being tight enough to not leak and being so tight that you break one of these fittings. Do one little snug here. We'll check it down the road and if there's any leaks from that spot, I can snug it up a little more. But for now, I think it's, I think it's good. So we already got the bottom screw in. That's the hardest one to reach, but it's not so bad now that it's a Phillips head deal instead of slotted. So we're going to get this last one in. There we are, new hardware installed. The new valves installed, a little bit of Teflon tape on that fitting, new air clamp on that, new valve. We'll get to our next trip and hopefully everything is fine. Hopefully it lasts a while, but uh, as I stated before, all the research I could do and all the reading on some of the forums indicates that these things just, they just go bad after a while. These little O-rings just go bad and they start to leak. So it's definitely a maintenance item. I wouldn't expect these to last forever, but it's definitely something I never would have thought of when I bought my first camper was to look at stuff like this.
So over the years as we've upgraded, now when I, if I'm looking at a new camper, I look at certain things that might need to be worked on and how easily I could or could not work on them. So 